I'm a lecturer in geography, I'm a human geographer. I work on migration under climate change, mostly the human side of climate change. But I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes or so trying to give you a sense of the department. Why is King's different from you know, all the other universities that you're going round to and how we, how we describe ourselves as a department. This is one of our students. I chose geography because of its interdisciplinary approach to understanding physical and human environments and relationships. It brought together several topics of interest for me alongside offering some amazing field trips. You can't go wrong. I would agree, of course I would agree. And it is true, a, a student came up, or a potential student came up to me this morning and said, shall I do so, social science or human geography? You know, and it was a really good question because, you know, what, and we actually set essays for the first years and we say, you know, what is geography? What does it mean to be a geographer? Um, and, and, you know, and, and I think one of the things is, is that we take social theory, we take Foucault, we take social science and we, we embed it in place. And we embed it in the relationships we have with other places, with other people, the flows that connect. Um, she's not wrong about the field trips. We want to get out there. We want to go and talk to people. We want to go and measure things and see things. And what's the point of doing it if you don't experience it yourself and start to connect on a level with, with that world? And for example, at the Royal Geographical Society, they have a, a weekend that's called Explore. Has anyone been to it? Heard of it? It's a little bit, I've got issues with the RGS and its imperial roots and exploration as an imperial project. Okay, but we won't get into that in this talk. But this, the session is all about exploration, and, and a lot of our lecturers go there to talk about sort of exploration with a purpose, which I suppose is fieldwork, right? Fieldwork is going out, exploring, but with a reason. You're not just exploring to map and conquer, you're exploring to understand the world and try and make it a better place, and that's core to what we do. So why Kings? Our flexibility. We are very flexible. We are. You can, you can be a, a BSc student taking social science BA modules, you can be a physical geographer that decides actually you really like social theory and we will let you switch courses. We let get you to specialise in your, whether you become a human geographer or a physical geographer, you know, the BA or the BSc path, after only one term, for good or for bad. I mean, I think there's reasons that both of us, everybody should have to do physical geography and everybody should have to do social science all the time to create interdisciplinary thinking, but at the same time, it allows you to specialise earlier. So that's something to think about, whether you'd like to do a whole year of physical geography if you're a human geographer, because we don't do that. We split you and allow you to specialise after Christmas in your first term. Module choice. We're a big department. You know, we have 40 or 50 teaching staff, which means we have a wide, wide range of modules. You know, we're a research-led teaching kind of department. All the people who teach you are research active. They're writing papers. They're doing research. Location. Being in London is a great place to study, right? And I think a lot of our students, you know, if you just want to work to pay your way, there's a lot of job opportunities. If you want to try and do extracurricular activities in terms of internships and, and getting involved, you know, you've got all the big NGOs, you've got all the big companies here. Internships can be taken not just in a two-week block in your holidays, but actually through your entire, you know, degree here. So I think that's, that's a win. And then you can segue into jobs, looking for jobs a lot easier. Field trips, we do have two field trips. The first one's in first year. Everybody goes on it, 160, 100, well, about 140 to 160 first years go on it. We go to the south of Spain and we do a range of activities. For example, I run an activity, you know, the plastic greenhouses where our tomatoes are grown in the winter. There's a lot of uh, undocumented migrants that work there. And we go and visit an NGO that supports them and we go and talk to the migrants and we talk to the refugees and hear their testimonials and find out how the NGO helps them. And then in the second year, we have a field trip that's subsidised by the department. Um, last year, it was subsidised to 50%. And you sort of split up then. So we have about six field trips. That's so about 30, 30 people in each field trip. And then you actually go and do your own bit of research. So for example, I go on the Kerala field trip, which is a development kind of focused field trip. And we, um, we, we team up with a, a college out there that's training people in tourism. And so all these Indian tourism students act as translators and the students in groups of three or four go out and do a project on their own with this translator and support from an academic. And I think it's amazing. I, only, I went for the first time last year and like, you know, you, you're in this person's house interviewing them on something that you decide, you know, and that's in your second year already, the first time of your second year. And I think it's really good to get you thinking about methods, thinking about research, thinking about why you want to ask these questions. Teaching quality, so this, what this stats show is that in the first year, 7% of students got a first, but by the third year, that was up to 24. So we help you progress. People improve. People start, you know, your first year is always a bit touch and go. You know, it's your first year, you're learning the ropes. And then, you know, we do manage to help you improve, and lots of people do improve. 
And so, you know, we are a good teaching department. So I think we do like to make our students think, you know, although we're, we're research-led, it's not that we think that students are just getting in the way of our research, right? Which can be the other side of that. For those of you trying to decide whether to come to King's or not, this is how we self-define. Okay, so these are the five research areas. This is how we kind of categorize ourselves in, in these broad themes. In terms of what makes King's King's, these are, what, these are the five areas where we think we're particularly strong. So contested development is, as it says, is about sort of critical perspectives on development. So not just teaching you how to do development, but being critical of development as a process. Critical of humanitarianism, critical of disaster response. And a lot of us are doing development in the context of the environment and development in the context of environmental change. So for example, the political ecology of, of water. So neoliberalization of, of water networks in, you know, in countries, what does that mean for people? or transboundary, we have a big water group actually, transboundary water conflict, you know, what is the politics of transboundary water, the tensions there and, and the conflicts around transboundary water. We have a whole research group on hazards and risks, so hazards in terms of like biophysical hazards, like human made hazards, like um, you know, nuclear waste or risk taking attitudes in people, you know, why don't we put our seat belts on or you know, that kind of thing. But then we also have people who, who work on hazards and climate risk. So natural disasters, how do we deal with the risks of natural disasters and reduce those? You know, there's no such thing as a natural disaster, right? They're socially created. So then we have another group, which is, this is, the, I suppose, what you'd call the, the BSC, the physical scientists. So they do a lot of cool stuff. So people like Mike Chadwick and uh, Rob Francis are working on urban ecosystems. So for example, like, you know, the little rivers that feed into the Thames. You know, there's all these tributaries to the Thames that are just these horrible gunked up creeks right now with shopping trolleys in them. You know, but do they have life living in them? What kind of life could live in them? You know, how do you restore these kind of ecosystems? Or how do you appreciate them for more than just being a rubbishy old creek in London, right? We have a lot of stuff for those of you who are interested in satellite imagery and using geographical information systems. We have a big group that's that way inclined. So for example, they use it to monitor um, wildfires, you know, and the, the haze that comes off wildfires and to map that and predict. And then we also have a group that looks at, um, well, this is, you know, Mark Mulligan, he's the head of the department right now. He has a, a model called Water World, where he looks at flows of water within different catchments based on different environmental conditions. Um, we've got a guy who does cool stuff, I like it because it's migration, about kind of out of Africa. So he's a sedimentologist and he looks at like geological, formations that represent kind of lake, edges of lakes, and then he looks for human settlements there to try and find the path that, you know, early man took out of Africa through what was, what is now the Sahara, but was back then lakes and rivers and stuff. So lots of cool stuff going on. Urban futures, this is another social science one. Urban futures is for those of you interested in cities. We're in an increasingly urbanized world. What kind of world do we want that to be? You know, what kind of, what kind of cities do we want to live in? How can we take back control over our cities? Do we want them to be unequal neoliberal consumption hubs or do we want them to be inclusive and, and enable us, you know, get all right to the city and David Harvey here, but, and we do it both in the global north and the global south. So we have somebody who looks at um, Indian cities and the use of technologies like smart technologies in, in Indian cities and how that is inclusive or exclusive, who's using them, what does that mean for what the city becomes. So some really lovely research there. And then finally, and this is a new and increasing area of work here, it's geocomputation and spatial analysis, so using big data, again, for the more quantitatively minded. This can be BA or BSE, because you can use social data or, or physical data, and you use big data and you map it and you do spatial statistics on it. So what are the house prices in London? What are the main transport routes people take to, you know, on the, the one on the top right is Oyster Cards and the routes people take and, and sort of traffic over time in the underground network, and people map you know, wildfires and, and, and wildfire spreading and things like that. So again, spatial statistics, coding, mapping of big data sets, that's something that we're, we're building up, well, we're strong in and we're building expertise in. Where we work, I mean, we're geographers and I think you'd expect and hope that we were working all around the world and we are. We're research led and we've got, these, we've got this expertise in this area that we bring into our teaching. So that's us, that's trying to give you a flavor of who we are. What will a degree here be like? Okay, so I've, I've banged on about it, research-led teaching. Because there's a lot of us, there's an unparalleled module choice. Everyone wants to teach on their pet subject, which is great for you guys, right? Because there's lots of 
pet subject modules from you to choose from, except me because I'm the new one and I did all the first year big cohort teaching. So um, you'll see a lot of me in the first year. What I also like to say is if you don't like me, please don't judge the department on me. There are like 45 other lecturers. So uh, try to be clear headed if I'm, if I'm turning you off right now. Independent research opportunities. I mean, what's, what's your degree about? It's about independent thinking. It's about getting you out and doing research yourself. And so we, you have, we call it the IGS, the Independent Geographical Study, which is your, little, you know, your dissertation that you write in your third year, 10,000 words. You do that research on your own. I mean, not on your own. I mean, you have a supervisor and we build you up gradually through the field trip research, through a research methods module. We build you up gradually to then going off out and doing your own research on your own over a year. You get a long time for it. And, and I think that's a key part of the degree. And I think it's something people look forward to because it's where you specialise. It's so once you know what you're really interested in, once you know the questions you want to answer, the knowledge you want to contribute, that's what you go and do. Diverse teaching settings as well. Like we all learn differently, eh? And then for those of you who hate exams, we're actually very coursework heavy in terms of our examination. If that sways you, it shouldn't. But lots of different ways of assessing you and lots of different ways of teaching you. So you have lectures, you do have you will have in your first year, especially big whole cohort lectures um, in the introductory modules that you do in your first year. A lot of them are done by me, but you will always be supported by a seminar after that. Okay, so you will always have a seminar with 15 people where you, you have an activity based around what I was lecturing on or whoever was lecturing on. So you'll never just go to a lecture and then be left on your own. In addition to those seminars, we have a tutorial system in the first year that you meet a human you have two tutors, one's a human geographer, one's a physical geographer, and you see them every week. I mean, one, the alternate, but you see someone every week, okay? And, and they teach you kind of the skills you need to be an academic. I said to survive in academia in the last time I gave this talk, which gave a horrible picture of what academia was like, but, you know, how to reference, how to write an essay, what's plagiarism, you know, it's, hard, it's new stuff for you guys, right? You can't just cut and paste from Wikipedia. I'm not saying you could do that at school either, but you really can't do it here. Although some people still do it in third year and you think, what have I taught you guys? I've mentioned this, but I think I want to stress, we never leave you alone, okay? So we always link you with a, a staff member, right? And we always link you with multiple staff members in case you don't meld that well with the staff member you've been given, right? So in your first year, you have these tutorials with a social scientist and a physical scientist. One of those becomes your personal tutor for the entire three years. You know, so like when you need a reference letter, they can write your reference letter. When you're having, say, pastoral issues you want someone to talk to, they are always there. They check up on you. In your second year, you still have your personal tutor, but then we have methods training. Every week, tutorials, group of seven of you. That person's someone that you, you're connecting with every week on a, in a small group basis. And then by your third year, again, you still have your personal tutor, but by then you have your dissertation supervisor. And that's somebody that you're connecting with on a however weekly basis. So it's just to stress that we try and give you access to, to as many different academics and to us as much as possible. Um, which I think, I mean, it's, it's a big difference from when, say, I was at uni. First year is a lot of core learning. So we, you have your core human geography, your core physical geography modules, then you specialize in a, a specialized human geography or physical geography module. You have methods training, everybody does methods training. But there's one more module, which I think is really good, called Geography in Action. It's a module of four different seminars to get you exposed to the range of research that goes on in the department and the range of teaching stuff, right? So like in the first year, you only know your first year people, right? And then you're like, who are all these other academics in the department? This module tries to expose you to them. So you have four different seminars of two blocks, maximum 25 people in the room, and a lecturer teaches you about their, their research topic. And you there's a certain level of choice. You can pick the ones that you want to go to, but they're first come, first served. So it gives you diversity. It helps you understand what geography is, helps you understand what research looks like, helps you get access to the, all the academics. Here's the field activities. So we try and use London as a field site. So some seminars take the form of, you know, walking tours or, you know, you go out. If you're learning about gentrification, you'll go out to Elephant and Castle, that kind of thing, you know use London because it's, you know, people must come on field trips to London, right, from other universities, other places. And then you have this Spain field trip. It's really great. We go away for four days, all of us. It's pretty chilled out. I mean, obviously you're there to learn and you get assessed on it, but it's a lot about it is for you guys to get to know each other so you don't feel lost and lonely in London because it is, a lot of people live at home. They do go back to their, their homes after. So it's to get you guys to meld. And universally, people love it. They do. They do love it. And there's about 13 staff members go on that trip because there's 150 of you, right? So it's so by your second year, you start to, you know, these themes I was talking about, you start to pick 
optional modules, you start to specialize, you start to say, I really like development, I really like migration, I really like geopolitics, I really like health geographies, you know, and you start to pick the modules that I really like gender in the city, I really like, you know, whatever, sexuality in the city, and you go and, and, you go and follow those modules. And then you have a field trip that matches that stream. Okay, so for example, I'm a development geographer, I go on the Kerala field trip, right? So the development geographers go on the Kerala field trip. I mean, if you really want to go to Hong Kong, we're not going to stop you, but that would be the, the most logical choice. The cultural and urban geographers go to Hong Kong or San Francisco. The physical geographers go to the Western Ghats or Morocco. We try to give you a range of prices, so the Morocco field trip's like 300 quid, quite cheap. Kerala's about 600 pounds, but, but heavily subsidized. And these, at maximum, you'll have about 30 students in a group. And we have a photo competition, and all these students take these really wonderful photos of their trip. And so these are just some photos from the, uh, the photo competition, just to, I don't know, just to show you the field trips. And that's a lecturer, Luke Dickens. He does stuff on graffiti um, as a form of resistance in kind of youth in gentrified areas. Uh, I love this one, this old lady in our house. That's obviously Hong Kong. This is Kerala. That's like, um, yeah, they keep bees in a small sort of forest. Make, and they make their own rubber there as well. For those of you who are interested in studying abroad, we have study abroad options. Go for one term or go for an entire year. I will say in addition, we have a summer school system as well. So if you don't want to like give up a whole term, there's a summer school system where you can go for a month, for example, to do study anything you really want in these overseas universities. You don't pay for the lectures, you pay for the accommodation and travel, I think. But a lot of people, for example, use that opportunity to then do research for their, their dissertation, for their IGS. So one of my students has gone to Singapore to study geography at, I don't know, it must, must be NUS, I suppose. And she's going to also do work on Singapore as a biophilic city at the same time. So it's a good opportunity to sort of do your research overseas, but also study overseas if you don't want to actually give up an entire term which, or an entire year, which is quite a lot. Year three, you continue to specialise. You know what you like now, you're fixing it. Or maybe you don't know what you like, you keep trying. Maybe you like lots of things, whatever. But a lot of it is about your dissertation. It's heavily dissertation weighted. And so you'll spend a lot of time with the support of your supervisor, you know, writing up your, well, researching and writing up your dissertation. Just to finish off, you do come out of Geography at King's employable. So 46% of our graduate, 2014 graduates are in full-time work, an extra 11%, so over, what's that, 57% are in work of some kind. You go into something afterwards, okay? And I think Geography is a high, it's one of the most employable subjects you can take. And what kind of jobs can you get? This is another question I get asked. I mean, any job. I mean, look at this. So basically, this is a 2004 kind of retro looking picture of the 2004 Morocco field trip. Somebody went back and tracked them, went and found where they all were and what they were doing afterwards. And like, I won't read them, but look at the range of stuff they're all doing, you know. Not one of them's a geography teacher. Not many of them are academics. But look at the range of jobs they're doing. They're working in NGOs, they're working in the private sector, they're working in the media. So I think the world's your oyster in terms of, because what we teach you is a, is a way to understand the world. You know, what we teach you is a way to make connections, to make sense of the world, to be critical of what you see and to understand it with a, a huge range of skills associated with that. But anyway, thank you all for coming.